Our aim in these sessions has been to help you experience real freedom. You'll discover the greatest freedom God can give you happens when you learn to trust His ability to take care of you each day. We have been seeking to answer the question, what is faith? In this part of the section, you'll discover what makes faith work. Galatians 5 verse 6 says, Faith works through love. Faith, therefore, is believing that I am loved and accepted by God and that He wants to answer my prayers. Having faith in God to answer your prayer comes out of a relationship in which you know you are loved. The lack of basic trust prevents us from trusting God and others. We are all made to be loved and to love. When we don't feel loved or find it difficult to love others, we are not functioning in our God-given ability. Therefore, my prayer for you is the same as Paul prayed for the Ephesian Christians. I pray that your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvellous love. God wants to fill you with himself, and when he fills you with himself, he will fill you with his love. For he is love. Learning to trust in God's love is a lifetime journey. If we had a full revelation of God's love for us, it would put our fears to rest and draw us into a greater desire to trust him. So let's talk about his love. It does not matter how we feel. God's love is always present. In Romans chapter 8, we read, Who can ever keep Christ's love from us? When we have trouble or calamity, is it because he doesn't love us anymore? No, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ when he died for us. Listen to Ephesians 1 verse 4, personalised for you from the Living Bible. Long ago, Even before he made the world, God chose me to be his very own. Through what Christ would do for me, he decided then to make me holy in his eyes, without a single fault. I stand before him covered with his love. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you so that you could be made spiritually alive. Personalising Ephesians 2 verse 4 God's mercy is so abundant and his love for you is so great that while you were spiritually dead in your disobedience, he brought you to life with Christ. It is by God's grace that you have been saved. Your Heavenly Father loves you so much that he not only made you spiritually alive, but he also made you his child. Think of it. You are a very precious child of God. Reading and personalising 1 John 3 verse 1, we discover that He loves me so much that he lets me be called his child. How amazing is this? God loves you so much that he not only made your spirit alive and calls you his child, but he loves you as much as he loves his only son. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 that the world would know that you love them as you love me. Romans 5 verse 8 says, God showed how much he loved us by having Christ die for us, even though we were sinful. God showed how much he loves you by sending Jesus to die, not only for your sin, but for the power that causes you to have a bias towards sinning. Acts 3 verse 26 confirms this. God sent Jesus to bless you and set you free from sin's power and bad habits. In the next session, We'll discuss how you can daily walk in freedom from the power that keeps you hooked into addictive coping mechanisms, weaknesses, and destructive patterns. There is not a thing that you have done 
or will ever do that Jesus has not paid the price for. Have you received God's forgiveness for all the wrong you have ever thought, said, or done? Or do you sometimes feel despair and guilt for sins that you have already asked God to forgive? When you doubt God's forgiveness, remind yourself of 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins to God, He will keep His promise and do what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. Also, when guilt lingers over past sins, remind yourself that, according to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 11, you are clean and accepted by God. It says, My sins are washed away, and I am set apart for God, and He has accepted me because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of my God has done for me. We have just seen from the Bible how much God loves us. The question we must all ask ourselves is, Do I love God as much as He loves me? Am I willing to trust God to take care of me each day? In order for you to daily receive by faith all that God has for you, you have to make a firm decision to believe God's promises in the Bible. Numbers 23 verse 19 assures us that God will always keep His promises. Let's read it together. God is no mere human. He doesn't tell lies or change his mind. God always keeps his promises. Remember, faith can move the things that seem like mountains in your life. Mark 11.23 says, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, Go fall into the sea. And if you have no doubts in your mind and believe that what you say will happen, God will do it for you. Do you have a challenge in your life that seems like a mountain that you have to get over? Don't look at how big the mountain or how great the challenge seems. Look at how big and good God is. Look at what God, the creator of the universe, says concerning your challenge. Psalm 119 verse 89 says about God, Your word is settled in heaven. If God says it, that settles it. You say, I'm afraid. Then he says, I am the Lord your God, who holds your right hand and tells you, don't be afraid, I will help you. You say, it's impossible. God says, what is impossible with men is possible with God. You say, I can't go on. He says, My grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. The faith walk requires us to make definite choices. Hebrews 3 verse 12 warns us to Watch out! Don't let evil thoughts or doubts make any of you turn from the living God. When negative thoughts or doubts come, and they will, choose not to entertain them. Rather, choose daily to claim God's favour, wisdom, and the promises He has given you. Here are the four keys again that will help you stay in faith when times are tough. 1. Continually remind God and thank Him for the fulfilment of His promise. 2. Do not be swayed by your emotions. 3. Encourage yourself continually by reminding yourself of the faithfulness of God. 4. Do not dwell on when or how you think God should answer your prayer. I'll read the prayer on the screen first, and then you can join me if that's what you want God to do for you. Heavenly Father, I am truly sorry for not loving you as much as you love me. Thank you for all you have done for me. Please forgive me for my independence, complacency and unbelief. Fill me with your power and love so I'll never be the same again. For I want to trust and obey you 
no matter how much it costs me. I renounce any claim Satan may have on my life through generational unbelief or past sins and I command unbelief, shame and false guilt to leave. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, I am truly sorry for not loving you as much as you love me. Thank you for all you have done for me. Please forgive me for my independence, complacency and unbelief. Fill me with your power and love so I'll never be the same again, for I want to trust and obey you, no matter how much it costs me. I renounce any claim Satan may have on my life through generational unbelief or past sins, and I command unbelief, shame and false guilt to leave. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I trust you have been encouraged to trust God more to meet your daily needs.